Say hi to Rudy. Hi Rudy. I'm Tim and this video we are going to take the Guilo's Zero model airplane go from this kit box to this. Let's get to it. In this video I'll go over a short history of the Japanese Zero then I'll show you how to take the Guilo Zero kit, build it, and modified from the park's own electronics. But just to fast forward a little bit, you'll see at the end of the video that the plane is underpowered, it just doesn't fly well. So we'll show the four flights that ended in just uh, very short flights into the ground. And I'm gonna show you way ahead where I plan on making an improvement to the power system on a follow-on video. The Japanese Zero was a remarkable fighter airplane. It was the main fighter for the Japanese Imperial Navy during World War II. It served from 1940 to 1945, 10,000 aircraft were built, and the Zero was part of the attacking force to Pearl Harbor. The Zero had extremely strict design criteria by the Japanese Navy. Uh, what they wanted was a very maneuverable fighter that could go a long distance. The range of the Zero was approximately 1,600 miles, which is an extremely long range for a fighter of that time. But to meet its performance requirements, the designers had to do a very careful design with very light weight. And to meet that lightweight goal, there was no armor uh, for the cockpit, and what was becoming common at the time were self-sealing fuel tanks. They did not put those in. So the jet flew well. The Japanese pilots were uh, well trained. The U.S. fighters, which up from 19 from the Pearl Harbor attack till the um, middle of 1943, was a Grumman F4F Wildcat, just weren't as good as the Zero, and just had to be very careful fighting it with tactics, diving and scooting away. The U.S. understood this, built a follow-on fighter, the F6F Hellcat. I'll put a video card for that here. The improved Hellcat, a 2,000 horsepower engine, um, slowly turned the tide against the Zero till it was the dominant fighter at the end of World War II. But the Zero was a very capable aircraft. The design proportions are well for an RC model, so we'll give one a try. Let's do an unbox of the Guilo's uh, Zero model kit. So this is the box, the standard uh, Guilo's artwork. The important thing is, <clears throat> you'll notice that this is a um, die-cut kit, uh, which means it has a little bit better balsa and it should be a little bit lighter. The wingspan is uh, almost 28 inches. That's at the upper limit of what I use for the park zone equipment. And the other thing I'm looking at it is the, the wings look nice, the tail, there's a fairly short nose moment, there's a fairly long tail moment, so as always, we're going to be concerned, we're going to be concerned about weight in the tail and having to add weight to the nose to achieve the proper center gravity. But we'll, we'll see if we can make this work. Again, here's the uh, key for the laser cut parts. So we'll hold off the plans for a second. Very nice Guilo's kit, uh, a decal set. This is the tissue that we'll not be using because we'll be um, covering it with a lightweight heat shrink covering. These are some things, cardboard uh, paper parts added to later kits for cockpit detail. I think it's kind of silly. I mean, they have an instrument panel and stuff. But if you wanted to make a display model, they, they are offering that. Guilo's has redone the plans for their uh, laser cut kits. Um, this is really quite helpful. This is a assembly guide. They have actual three views of the airplane so you can get an idea what it looks like if you want to add details. So notes to the model builder and the fuselage frame with a step-by-step -step instruction, the same for the wing. Very straightforward construction, nothing unusual here. Um, everything's fine right here. I do use these instructions. They have a good sequence of events for putting everything together. The wing looks like a very normal Guilo's wing, uh, nothing special. Probably a few more extra ribs just to save weight. Every other wing rib will be removed. Don't they have some uh, cracked ribs for the uh, center section by the fuselage? Again, no surprises, the tissue covering we'll ignore because we're going to be using the heat shrink and then just a break out of uh, various parts if you're going to make it for your rubber free flight model. These are the actual plans themselves and, and, and they're good plans. There's, there's a lot of uh, good information on them. So again, the Zero is a fairly simple model for Guilo's kit, uh, the fuselage, uh, the, the firewall. 
The tail surfaces are shown built up. I will make mine out of 1 16th inch balsa reinforced as necessary with cross members. I'll have to put in a um, elevator. I plan to make this a three channel model with ailerons, elevator, no rudder, so the rudder fin will be a, a um, single assembly. There's no landing gear in this model. I'm going to make it uh, with uh, pretend the gear is up so that'll save a little bit of weight. Fuselage is very ordinary here, no surprises. Uh, this is the wing. Again, the ribs are quite close. I'm going to skip every other wing, every other rib to save some weight. The hedral brake is here. Again, nothing real surprising. And I will have to do some thought to making the ailerons for this. And um, we'll, we'll do that as we get into the kit, the ribs right here. Um, these are U control installations. We don't have to worry about that with a gas engine. This is actually a, a layout for a radio control installation. When this was designed years ago, the only radio that would work is a lightweight single channel pulse using rudder control only. I can't imagine using that with a rubber band actuator, but they show the electronics, the battery up here, the actuator. Um, they reinforce it with some sheeting. So that's information that we don't have to worry about too much with our modern um, electronics just for um, you can refer to it and this is a side view of the fuselage again a very short nose moment here's the center gravity right here there's just not a lot of um, distance on the nose so we'll have to pay attention to that as we add the um, motor and the electronics for that just keep the tail as lightweight as possible and we, we're, we're going to have to add some weight to the nose for sure. There's no doubt about that. Take a look at the kit. Pretty good balsa. These are the standard balsa stringers. Uh, the laser cut balsa in a um, uh, plastic pack. It, it feels lightweight. I think that'll work out well. The cowl very helpful. Uh, Guilos can't die cut or, or, or doesn't want to die cut plywood, so they have this weird plastic stuff for U control mounts, firewalls, things like that. We're going to throw that away and not use that. Some more plastic parts for radiators, things of that nature. The wing leading edge, the canopy, which is nice. And then items for the pre flight version, the motor, clay for balancing and landing gear. So, not going to worry about that too much, nor the uh, rubber bands. So that's the kit. It looks like a pretty straightforward kit. As always, my target weight, I'm going to try to keep it under three ounces for sure. Two and a half ounces would be fine. Keep the tail as light as possible and um, to, to achieve the center of gravity. Because this Guilo's kit is what I call the medium size, wingspans between 24 and 28 inches, I think it'll be a suitable candidate for the um, Spectrum Horizon Hobby line of microelectronics. I'll put a card up here that'll show where to buy these. Uh, Steven Zero is what I use. But this will be the system, and this system will be a little bit different than the previous models I did with the Aronka and the Pilatus because it'll be three channels, but I'm going to use the um, elevator and ailerons in this case, plus a throttle for three channels. So this is the brick. This is the antenna. This has a receiver, the electronic speed control. These little uh, linear servos go back and forth. So remember, whenever using these uh, systems, if you power them up without the receiver on, they immediately go into the bind mode. So I've turned on my receiver, uh, my transmitter rather. So now we will make double sure the throttle is low. We'll plug it in. So that's the elevator up and down. Notice these two servos will be the ailerons motor. So I'll hold on to that. And hopefully that'll be enough power for the model. So that's the kit, the unbox, the um, radar controls. Now we can start building the aircraft. I'm a little over halfway through on my construction of the zero wing. You can see it here on the building board. Really nothing unusual about this at all. Uh, the dihedral brakes are located here. There are some cracks in the ribs needed to line it up to the fuselage. That's pretty clear from the uh, plans. One quarter inch square balsa for the leading edge. Again, no surprises. Um, what I did, as I mentioned, is here, 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 here. 
There should be a ribs. I did not place the ribs there just to save weight. This spacing I think is fine, especially with the iron uncovering. So what I'll do tomorrow when the glue dries, take it off, put the stringers on the bottom, shape the leading edge and we'll be done with a wing. Now, one important thing that you probably notice is yesterday I mentioned that I was gonna build ailerons to this model. And I thought about it, I thought about it, and I'm not gonna put on ailerons. Um, it's going to be uh, three channels. It's gonna be rudder, um, an elevator plus throttle. I could do the ailerons. The wing is a fairly small wing. It's, the aileron is going to add some, complex, some complexity to it and they will add weight because I've got to have the uh, tail surfaces anyhow. The ailerons with the buildup of the ailerons will add some weight. Also the small servos is just another two bits of electronics that have to work that can't fail. I've had very good luck with the brick, with the controls to the rudder and elevator. So I just made the decision to keep things simple, reduce a little bit of weight, to keep it with a rudder and elevator control. Again, the equipment is far forward. I'm still concerned about putting in nose um, weight to balance it out, but whatever happens, happens. But I, I know enough to keep the, uh, the tail as light as possible and we'll see how that goes from there. So everything's going fine. Uh, we'll finish up the wing tomorrow, start on the fuselage and then proceed from there. This is a view of the one and a half inch dihedral braces that I use to prop up both uh, either end of the wings to glue the dihedral with the cross members of the 1 16th inch square balsa. Note on the plan it shows about one and one eighth inch for the dihedral, yet the RC version single channel had a little bit more. This is the uh, beginning of the fuselage. You can see the crutch in place. I recommend taking that crutch, sanding a little bit off just so it fits better into the side notches. Excuse me, I've completed the wing on the Zero and it went together fine. It's just a, a very normal uh, Guilos build for the wing. I more and more like the die cut parts. They are very clean cut. They, they fit very well. The one thing I'd add as a technique on the die cut, die cut parts on the wing and the fuselage, these are 1 16th inch square balls. They're very common with all the Guilos kits that fit into these notches and the ribs, formers on the fuselage. The, the laser cutting does cut out the notches, but it's helpful to make them just a little bit uh, bigger with an X-Acto knife. The uh, stringers fit in a lot better. So I did that for all the ribs and all the formers. Now, one thing about this wing is this quarter inch balsa for the leading edge. The density of the balsa was different. This one was denser. This was a lighter balsa. Almost went to my um, wood to get a, a more similar uh, density, but I went with this one. The problem was when it was done, this side was noticeably heavier when you tried to balance it because of the thicker wood. So what I did is I um, epoxied in a washer there to make sure that the wing balanced either side. That's an important thing to do because there's no ailerons in this model. So keep an eye on that as you build your wing. The other thing is the amount of um, dihedral. Uh, I'm not going to show you the plans, but it says here one one eighth inch wing dihedral. However, when you look at the separate directions for the rate of control, it says to add another inch to the wing in addition to that to have uh, two inch, two and one eighth inches dihedral. That's a lot of dihedral, and I think the reason they did that was for the single channel pulse where you went full rudder a lot, the plane had to recover fairly quickly. So what I did was I compromised and I had the dihedral of one and a half inches on each side. Um, I think that's reasonable, we'll see how that uh, works. The other thing I did is there are slots here for the um, a plywood doubler that goes in here for the landing gear. I'm not gonna put in any landing gear. I had a different dihedral angle. What I did was, if you can look, I put three layers of 1 16th inch balsa uh, using the uh, CA glue to put them together. When you CA glue together the separate stringers here, it's a very strong bond. That's a good center section bond. Uh, this is the center of the wing out to the first panels. I think that'll hold things together pretty well. So the wing doesn't feel too, um, too heavy. I think it'll work out well. The other thing I'm interested in, um, as I mentioned, this is the park zone equipment, and I've used this on my other Guilos models, um, the Aronka here, for example, the 24 inch wingspan. So you can see that this is quite a bit bigger wing than that. So we'll, it's good to have a little bit more wing area, but there's more weight. We'll see how that works with the engine once we put everything together. 
I've completed the uh, second half of the fuselage. Uh, so here is just a standard um, Quilos fuselage with the formers on each side. You saw previously it's built on the plans. So the two um, lessons I've learned, this is my sixth Guilos conversion. The two things that you always want to think about when you're converting a Guilos kit to radio control flight, the models tend to be a little bit tail heavy just as you add control surfaces and strings to the back, which means you're going to have to add some weight to the, to the um, nose to balance it out. So anything you can do to minimize weight in the back, reduce the number of stringers, lighter wood, I may even put some cutouts on the um, horizontal and vertical tail surfaces, we'll see. Is helpful. The other thing is the electronics are much much easier to install in the fuselage before you put any of the 1 um, 16th inch square balsa stringers so just so you can get to where they are. So what will happen is tomorrow I will figure out how to put in the park zone somewhere along here. I, I'll just I'll tackle it tomorrow to get that installed and get the more importantly the control rods in little holes through the formers so that we have a elevator and a rudder push rod and the controls in battery is probably going to be in the front of the fuselage just for space that that'll be my task tomorrow to figure out how to do that so um that will all be in place before i put in the um stringers to cover up the fuselage so this is an important update on the zero fuselage this is what i've done so far both uh, former halves are on with the side keels and then the um, side uh, section for the wing, so that's in place. What, we're do what I'm going to describe now is putting in the control push rods for the radio system. So as I discussed earlier, this is the little receiver, electronic speed control, and two servos that will go into the airplane with the antenna and the battery lead here. It's much, much easier to install or visualize the installation of the radio equipment without the side 1 16th inch square stringers in place so you have complete access. So what I've decided to do because of the very short distance between the wing leading edge and the nose, I put a little platform on here and I'm going to put the brick in place like this with double sided sticky tape. This will leave connection space to put to connect the battery, I think with the battery, I'll put it something like this underneath the cowl. And I've put on or just visualized the um, plastic cowling. I've drawn some lines for another mount along here to put on the engine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install the engine upside down so that this is through the center of the cowl. So that's the rough idea of how I have to do it. I've also measured that the engine has to be, excuse me, uh, one and three eighths inch out on the mount. So I have the rough idea how to do that. And what I do for the motor, about two to three degrees down thrust, two degrees right thrust seems to be okay. Now the other thing you have to do, and this is important, is to take the control rods here and install them. And what I did was I put a few cross members here and just put little holes through the various formers so that it went out to the back. Now, I made a diagram of this control zone, um, um, the, the brick with the antenna here. This top one is the elevator, the bottom one is the rudder. You have to put that in to make sure you know which way it's going to be. Remember the little uh, gears here that turn the linear servos? These have to be front of the aircraft because the control rods can't go through the gears. They have to go back this way. So just make sure you get that correct. Also, looking at the diagram, the rudder is here, the elevator is here. So um, the rudder is this control arm right here. This goes out, so it comes out at this section on top of the elevator and, and will connect to the rudder back here. Same way the elevator control rods are all in place. They come out and this is the slot for the elevator, so this will be underneath to control the elevator. The beauty of this arrangement is I can take these out a fair amount of distance, easily connect them to with the Z-Benz to the controller, to the brick, put the brick in place, and what I'm going to do that's a little bit unusual is this brick will be in place. We're going to cover all around it. I'm not going to have access to this brick. I've flown a couple of these. There's really not too much of a need to get to this brick once it's installed, so I'm going to try that this time. 
if I wanted access, probably what I'd have to do is mount this upside down here and build a hatch for the lower portion here. But I'm going to try just installing it and leaving it in place. But the key thing, these are all done ahead of time so that we can install the brick, then cover the airplane with the 116th inch balsa and the covering and just have that all in place. One other item I'd like to point out when building the fuselage is that the formers go on each half. There's a top and a bottom to each former. If you look here, you can see the little T. The T stands for top. So it's on the back of this former, on these two formers. I don't know if you can see it, the little T is located there. On the front two, the T's are here and here. As a lot of the formats can look the same on uh, top and bottom, the T's are very useful to make sure the top is at the top, so just keep track of that as you add the formats to the fuselage. This picture, uh, picture shows good detail of the control rods for the rudder and elevator and the cross members, little holes poked in the formers to prevent flexing on the control runs. The fuselage side view is really a well-drawn plan. It shows where the 1 16th inch members will be. Uh, these are the 1 16th inch end balsa stringers in place and the cutouts for the rudder elevator and uh, to be traced on the 1 16th inch balsa and you can see the electronics in place in the fuselage. And complete with the uh, framing of the Zero, <clears throat> this is the wing attached to the fuselage obviously. I use some tape to hold it in place because I just want to look at the front to make sure that the wing is level with the fuselage, which it is. Then look at the side and you want just a little bit of positive incidence where the leading edge of the wing goes up just a little bit and I sanded the crutch to have that in place. Also by having the wing in place held in I can make sure the stabilizer is uh, straight. So I glued that in. Uh, this is the stabilizer. I'll have to do some fiddling to get the air uh, elevator with the connector to go back and forth on that. That'll be not too much trouble. The rudder will go in along here and then, or, or the fin rather, than the rudder. Note also on the fin, because <clears throat> it is cross grain with the covering, it can bend a little bit, so I put a 1 32nd inch balsa across here. I'll put a reinforcement of 1 32nd inch balsa wherever the control horn goes on the rudder. That'll be in place, as well as the uh, 1 32nd reinforcement top and bottom for the cross section of the um, elevators. And all the tail surfaces are 1 16th, 1 16th inch balls. I think that's about right. So I'd like to also show you the uh, motor mount. I think this came out pretty well. Uh, this is just a uh, one quarter inch balsa cut to shape, some plywood epoxied into place to hold everything. I installed the motor upside down essentially. This is the center line by the nose with some more one sixth inch inch plywood and holes and everything to hold this into place. So I think that's in pretty good shape. You can see the control unit in there and Velcro for the battery. So the one, let's go ahead and turn on the engine for a moment. Remember with the park zone motors, you always want to turn the transmitter on first so it sees a signal when you plug it in. Polarity is very important when you plug this in. I have the red positive wire to the top. Make sure the throttle is low. So if you just poke inside with the camera, you can see the elevator. Now let's look at the motor. So as always, you'd like a little bit more power, okay? This model's coming in heavy. I've weighed it now, it's 2.4 ounces. The majority of the weight comes to the wing. The density of the balsa wood on the ribs and the leading edge and the trailing edge, it's, it's pretty high density. So 2.4 ounces before covering, this is going to be over 3 ounces guaranteed. Once I add the tail, I'll have to add a little bit of weight on the nose, so we'll see what happens. We will continue working on it. One tip for power is to make sure you get a nice new battery. These batteries do age over time, so I'll be using a brand new battery to power this to make sure that it's fully powered up. And um, we'll just see how it works. If it flies, fine. If it doesn't, I've got some ideas to put on a larger engine, but that'll be a pretty major rework. Re rework. If we have to do that, that'll be in part two. 
The other thing I want to point out is the cowl. So this is the cowl. As I mentioned before with these motors, the propeller screws onto the shaft and what you don't want to do is be continually taking the propeller on and off. It'll just weaken everything. So what I do is I made a little cutout for the battery access and I just split the cowl along here so that as I put it on, it can fit over the propeller shaft. So this is more or less what the cowl will look like in place. We'll use a clear um, canopy glue to hold it into place and then we'll just um, cover it with a little bit of covering. So the cowl fits about right onto the engine. So the next step is to cover it and um, we'll, we'll do that in the next video. So we're all set to cover the fuselage now. I put the fin on in place and the rudder will fit right there. I did my magic with the elevators to make sure it fits through the end of the fuselage. You'll notice the um, stabilizer elevator is quite ahead of the rudder just the way the um, Zero is designed. It's just a very nice fuselage design, clean. There's just no headrests or anything, just a very efficient design. But what I wanted to point out on this video was weight. As I've discussed all along, I'm, you're concerned about the weight with any Guilo's plane with the park's own um, electronics. I think three ounces is about the top weight. Well, this is coming in about 2.9 ounces. So it suddenly occurred to me that there is some extra wood like along these side keel members. And I just cut out sections of the side keels on both sides, top and bottom. I also, because the wing was just heavy from this pretty big trailing edge, you can see the, the amount of wood that I just cut out along here. And I even scalloped out wood from the leading edge on both sides. So I think this will be plenty strong enough for the covering. This is some of the wood just from the wing alone that I took off. And it's imperative that if you build these Guilos planes, you get a digital scale like this. Short answer is I saved half of an ounce. So instead of 22.9 um, ounces, it's really down about 2.2 ounces right now. So the covering will add at least half an ounce, maybe six tenths or more. So it'll be up against uh, three ounces. I, am, I think I'm going to have to add some nose weight, we'll just add some total weight, but the bottom line is I'm going to be pretty close to three ounces. The other thing I realized is look at the wing, it's a fairly a large wing for the amount of wing area, so I think that may help a little bit. The, final, uh, the two final things I want to point out is I mentioned the importance of a new battery. Well, I charged up this new battery, there's a notable boost in power from this, so that's good news. And the other thing that I wanted to mention when you put in these side keels when the fuselage is halfway on the plan, the die cutting, excuse me, the laser cutting does a very good job of the notches, but it's, you're always going to have a little bit error. So what I do is I take this side keel and I sand it, take about a 32nd of an inch off of uh, the keel so it's a little bit thinner. That way it fits into this um, laser cut notches much easier if there's any misalignment and that's a good technique. So I think we're all set to start covering tomorrow and the next video you'll see some covering on the model. I have to report that I've completed covering the zero. Here's the wing, the bottom and the top all nice and flat. And here is the fuselage. I'm going to be careful with it because I just put on the white canopy glue to hold on the canopy and the cowl that'll take overnight to dry. So that's I'm happy to get to that spot. A couple things I wanted to point out for the covering, I use Ultra Coat Park Light. I got this at Hangar 9. Uh, anytime you see light in the covering material, that's a lightweight covering. That's good for these smaller models like Guilos for two reasons. It's a lightweight covering and being a lightweight covering, it doesn't shrink as much. The heavier coverings, coverings like Monocoat itself can be very heavy and they really shrink enough where these delicate structures would be twisted out of shape. So Park Light, I'm, I'm very happy with that. One thing I want to emphasize on the park light, it can be hard to get this. I don't know what the deal is with the supply trait chains or whatever, but if you see a color you like available, get a roll or two because it might not be there. A lot of the more popular colors um, are just not available. They're out of stock and you're left with orange and pink and things like that. The other thing I want to point out, and I'll put a picture up here about this, is when you shrink the covering, uh, the top part with the bottoms in place, there's a fair amount of heat inside from the heat gun 
that can prevent the covering from ad, uh, ad, uh, properly shrinking. So what you have to do is make a hole for the heat to escape. Sometimes you can put a little prick in the bottom, but a better way to do it, and the picture I'll show you, is you put a little notch in each rib after the wing is built so the hot air can escape from there so it can shrink prop properly. So just a technique um, for that. The other thing I mentioned for the canopy is to keep the um, plastic parts in place, the cowl and the canopy, is an important glue is, is just what they call canopy glue. It's white here, but the key thing about the glue, it, it'll have to go overnight, but it dries clear and it absolutely holds everything in place. And it goes by various names. This is Formula 560, the world's best canopy glue. If you just get canopy glue, that's a absolutely necessary thing to glue on plastic parts like canopies because it's clear. So I'm um, happy to report the weight is 2.8 ounces right now, but that is without any uh, look towards the center of gravity. I'm probably gonna have to add some nose weight. We'll let this dry overnight. Tomorrow we'll do the final um, controls, uh, hook up with the elevator and rudder, get the balance in place, put on the decals, and we should be ready for the first test flight. This is a completed wheel of zero. It's all set to fly. I'm happy with the way that came out. As I've mentioned for all of these conversions, it's the first time I built the Zero, so it's a prototype just to see how the kit goes together. Weak points, things I can change to make it lighter, etc. So, as I mentioned from the outset, my concern was weight for this model. I had a target weight of 3.0 ounces as the maximum weight for the Park Zone um, electronics power hit. I did the lightning techniques I described earlier. <clears throat> Put on the covering, put everything together, even the epoxy adds a little bit of weight. The total weight came up to 3.0 ounces, so I was pretty happy, except that I wasn't happy because it did not balance at the center of gravity. It's a fairly short nose moment, so you don't have a lot to work with. Just with the normal structure in the tail, it came in a little bit tail heavy, and if you look here, I did three washers, pretty heavy washers, and the three washers that I epoxied in to bring the center of gravity in the proper location adds seven tenths of an ounce. So the total weight of this aircraft is 3.7 ounces. So um, it is what it is. It's just a whole part of the um, build process. But you can see one of the advantages of this motor mount, the way I did it upside down, there was a little shelf. I did that on purpose because I knew that I could use that to add the nose weight, which I did. Again, even though it pokes out a little bit, I'm just trying to keep it as far forward as possible. So this is what it is. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it a test flight, see how it works, and then proceed from there. So let's um, hitch everything up just to show you what the control throws look like, uh, what, the, what the motor looks like running, and then, then we'll prepare to head out to the field. The transmitter is on, it's on the zero. Throttle is low. Observe correct polarity. And here's the elevator, rudder. I think that should be about right in the throttle. So the question is, is that going to be enough power? I, I don't know. It, it doesn't, it's not a lot. The batteries will be charged up. We'll see how that works. So we'll give it a shot and just see how it works. Um, what I do plan to do though, if it's not enough power, I've got some ideas for adding a new motor uh, for that'll provide sufficient power with a little bit more weight. Let's do the test flight first. If I add, if I do add the upgraded motor, that'll be a follow-on video from here. I'll let you know after the first test flights. The other thing I wanted to point out, just for your background information, when I was putting on the cowl, I tested the controls of the motors. The motors didn't work. There was just not anything happening on the motor. Did some swapping out of other motors, etc. Long story short, there was a loose wire somewhere in the electronics of that brick. And when I pressed down on the um, electrical outlet for the motor, it came back to life. So just a reminder with these parts on electronics, the Horizon Hobby Spectrum, be very careful with them. They, they can get a loose component that the whole thing shuts down. It's just the way they are. So just be as careful as possible. So, I think the model came out nice. Um, I'm happy with it, and the next flight is going out to the field once we get some good weather. So we're gonna give a little straight ahead test flight in the back lot here before we head out to the field, just to have 
some idea if the engine has enough power for this 3.7 ounce model, so we'll give it a shot. Yep. So we came back yesterday from flying this airplane. As you can see, it did not fly. It, it, there were four short flights and it just ended up going into the ground. I'm pretty sure the plane will fly okay just watching that initial behavior. There simply wasn't enough power from the motor. I kind of suspected that from the beginning. Three ounces is pretty much my top weight for one of these Guilos kits. With the nose um, weight they had to put in to bring in the center of gravity, it came out at 3.7 ounces and I could tell when I let it go, it just wasn't going to have enough power. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. So what I'm going to do on a, the next video, not this one, but a follow-on one uh, over the next couple of weeks, is I'm going to do some open-heart surgery. I don't know how this, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to cut an excess hatch here, probably keep it as a hatch, take out the parts on equipment, probably take off the cowl, remove the little motor. And what I intend to do is put in just a normal... RC control system with electronic speed controller, little tiny motor like this, uh, the exact type to be determined, a receiver, and these two little um, HS40 servos, so the rudder and elevator. So the plane will definitely come in heavier with that equipment. I don't really have a target weight because I've never done this before. I do think this is a pretty big wing. I think there's enough wingspan here to take that higher power setting, but at the higher weight, it's just gonna to have to fly faster. I think it's gonna fly a lot like the Hellcat. I'll put the card up here for the Hellcat. But we will figure out how that works. Um, oh, the other thing is when I flew the airplane, truth be told, I think it probably was still just a tad tail heavy looking at the flight characteristics. But again, it, it was stalling out almost immediately. So we'll have the higher power uh, from the, um, a bigger electric motor, the regular LiPo battery. It'll fly faster and we'll just see how that works. And that might be the new standard for these World War II types of wheel of aircraft. So that should be coming out here shortly.